So for this video, we're going to quickly show how to make an animated GIF in Photoshop. There are different ways to do this, and what's best for me may not be best for you, but this is how I do it, and this is the way that I found to be pretty easy and uh, to be cooperative. So it's going to look sort of like this when it finishes. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Photoshop. I'm using CS6, it's the last one that didn't require a subscription model. If you have the newer version of CC, that's fine, it will it'll be fine. You can do all the same things, you can actually do more, but you won't have any problem, shouldn't have any problem following along. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, just so I can zoom in and you can still see all of all the buttons and everything. Down here I have mini bridge and I have timeline, so what I want is timeline. Now if you don't have timeline down here, that's okay. If you go up to Window, you can find Timeline in here. Move this up a little bit. There we go. So if I click Timeline right now, it disappears. If I click it again, awesome. So this is what we want. We want Timeline. Now my Timeline is currently set a little weird. It's set to like video mode, and I don't want that. Hopefully yours does not look this way. But if it does, that's okay. Now right now I can click around, and it doesn't really let me do anything. It doesn't let me switch it. So let's go ahead and make a new document. Size doesn't really matter. I'm going to have mine in landscape, so 11 by 8.5, since that's typically what we think of as viewing screens, televisions, movie theaters, computer screens, etc. Now that I've done that, now I have this option down here where it says create video timeline. I don't want a video timeline. That's kind of what we were seeing a moment ago. Instead, I want to make sure it says frame animation. If yours starts on frame animation, cool. But if it says video, no problem. Just switch it over to frame. Now we need to actually draw stuff. We're going to go ahead and ignore this down here for right now. We're going to draw my little snake creature thing. So I've got my layers here. I don't really need the styles open right now, so tell that to go away. So we'll hide the styles. And uh, this is pretty much all I need, just my colors and my layers. First thing, I'm going to duplicate the layer uh, because I don't want to work on the original backgrounds because I'm going to constantly duplicate it over and over again. So I'll go ahead and use this paintbrush and I'm going to make my snake, yeah, maybe maybe a nice coral color. All right, um, right now my canvas is super big. I don't want it to be that big. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink down my image size. Instead of 300 resolution, I'm going to go with 72. There we go. That seems more like a manageable size. So my actual animation is about that big. That that feels reasonable to me. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw my, my little snake guy. So nothing super complicated. I'm just doing something simple just to kind of give you the idea and of course you can do more amazing stuff later. I recommend you start simple so that way it's easy and not a big deal, not a big problem. So I've got my snake. So what I need to do now. So I've got one layer for an animation, I need multiple layers, right? I need I need one drawing after the other with each one being a little different to give it that illusion of movement. So I'm going to duplicate my background again, and I'm going to drop the fill on this to 50, so that way I can see through the white to the layer below it, and I can use that as sort of a guideline for my snake. So I'm going to make his head sort of bob up and down, and the little... Um, pattern in his tail is going to change a little bit, I guess, as if he's sort of like jamming up to some music or something. So there we go. So there's layer two, and we'll do another layer, and we'll drop this one to 50 as well. And so this technique that I'm doing right now, where I'm, I'm using the previous layers to kind of guide the next layer, is often referred to as onion skinning. I don't want to make his head actually smaller. That would be a little weird if his head shrinks. Just want it to bob up and down. Now it can be a little difficult as you start getting more and more layers to know which ones are the current, so I could always go back if you're getting confused and uh, increase the, the opacity back to 100 on, on the previous. So that way I'm just seeing the newest one. So I can do the same here, or I guess I'm using fill right now, opacity is up here, but it doesn't really make a difference which one you're using as long as you're paying attention. That is kind of a sad looking snake. 
I guess I was a little confused by having both of them show up there. Huh. Well, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Jamming has its side effects. Alright. So now... We'll say this is going to be maybe the top of the head bob. And his tail will curl a little bit more. Maybe I can fix him and make him start to look a little more natural again. Alright. So I could try to redraw him like moving his head back down and kind of going back the way he was. But just to make this faster, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the ones below it. So that way you don't have to watch me draw several more frames. So it's going to kind of basically do that. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and that will go up top and I'll duplicate this layer and that will go there. So now if we click through head moves up, head moves back down. Now I've got one with partial transparency still. Let's fix that. There we go. And we should be good. Now I've still got this background layer here with nothing on it and I suppose that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click here and we can see here some of the different options. So we can say make frames from layers and that's what I want to do. So now if we look here we've got different ones and if we play it not too bad if we change this from once to forever. There we go. Of course, we've got this flicker in there, and that's because of this background layer here. So if I had deleted that, then that wouldn't be in there. And of course, I can delete this actual frame as well. And now if we play it, there we go. It's not amazing, but it's a little gift that you could use to kind of understand the basics of it, and then you can make others on your own. Oh, I'm getting slowing down a little bit there. Not sure what's going on with that. If I do say for web, I can go in here and I can change this from JPEG to GIF. A JPEG does not support moving graphics, so you need to have a GIF file. And uh, we can even try it out and see what we think. It's going a little slow if you ask me, and that might be due to the size. Of course, it also could be because I'm recording video at the same time, but whatever. Um, maybe if we drop this down a bit, 500. He's still playing pretty slow. The other thing that I can do too is I can change the number of colors. I don't need 256 colors because I only used one. So limiting this can also drop that file size. We can see here 41 kilobytes. If I drop this to 16 colors, you can see it's much smaller now and a much smaller palette. That might make yours look terrible depending on how many colors you used. But play with it, see what looks right to you. And that just moves rather slow, doesn't it? All right, well, we'll go ahead and save it. And uh, we'll call it Snake. And if I open it with a browser, let's see if that's better. Ah, there we go. So it's actually not that slow, but there you go. Quick, easy GIF.